You can't suck yourself along with a vacuum cleaner, so don't bother trying that. However, I did build a vacuum cleaner powered air engine which I could ride along on. This design was inspired by YouTuber Matthias Wandel and his original design was made from wood. I built a larger 3D printed version and I tried my best to tolerance the parts by sanding them so that there were minimal leaks. The concept behind this type of engine is that there's a piston which is pushed or pulled in either direction by air pressure. This drives a flywheel and on that flywheel is a smaller radius crank which drives the air valve to let the air in and out of either end of the piston cylinder at the right time. This crank is offset by 90 degrees from the main piston so that the air is always constantly chasing the piston. If the crank was 180 degrees out of phase then air pressure would equalise in either side of the piston and it would just get stuck in the middle. I've built a few projects recently where I pushed myself along with electric ducted fans. These run on a 6S LiPo battery and draw 80 amps each, so they're rated at nearly 2 kilowatts each. That gives us quite a lot of airflow and also quite a lot of pressure. Project Air recently built a hovercraft that would carry a person with just four of these EDFs providing air to inflate the skirt. So this time I'm going to build a two cylinder version of the air engine with each cylinder being driven by an EDF. We'll see if this is more efficient than just blowing the air against the atmosphere to propel me. This time I've made the piston cylinders round and also longer so they travel further before they have to change direction. And I've also moved the inlet and outlet valves around 90 degrees from each other so they can be larger relative to the height of the cylinder. And this should allow for more airflow in and out of the cylinders. There are lots of parts to 3D print, we've got lots of crank arms and things like that including this really long one that operates the air valves. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot 3D Printers for supporting my channel with 3D printers. It makes it much easier to get all the parts done when there's so many 3D printers working at once. Here's one of the big air inlets which is about halfway 3D printed and here's one of the half of the pieces which is going to stick onto aluminium tubes to let the air in and out. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, all these parts are printed in Pro PLA+. I'm using aluminium tube to make the cylinders so I've made this 3D printed collar which I've clamped on there with an M4 nut and bolt. I can measure that from the end there and basically this is a square so that I can cut this by hand with a hacksaw and I can get that cut nice and square. So I'm just going to cut it all the way around, rotating it round and round and round and of course that 3D print will allow me to align the saw properly. So that's not a bad edge for saw cut, it's pretty square and uniform and I can just clean that up with a bit of sandpaper. So we'll give that a quick rub and a rub round the inside and we should have something that looks pretty good all together. And this is perfectly smooth on the inside unlike the previous 3D printed version so we should have far less leakage. So now it's time to try and tolerance the other parts. We've got this big air intake with the exhaust at the bottom and this valve with the intake and outtake valve pieces at 90 degrees from each other. But um, yeah, I've printed these sort of tolerance, but yeah, that doesn't fit at all at the moment. And of course, the build lines are going the wrong way. So we're going to have to do quite a lot of sanding to try and make this fit so it moves smoothly. But there's not too much leakage around those holes. So this is just some high grit sandpaper. And we're going to sand the inside, of course, as well, because it has to fit around a corner, which is a bit of a design limitation, really. But there we go. That's slightly better now. But uh, yeah, it's going to have to take quite a bit more off that, I think. Yeah, that fits a bit better. Probably needs a bit more work, but we're definitely getting there. So obviously our cylinder will fit between those two black parts, and in the middle of that is the piston, and that's running on a smaller piece of aluminium tube through two holes in the end, which is another point of leakage. So I've been quite careful to tolerance that so it moves freely as well. The piston itself needs to be tolerant for the tube, so I've made sure that's free moving and it doesn't bind, but there probably still are gaps around it. It's very difficult to put seals in without causing any more friction. So we just need to make sure that the parts move freely so they can be blown by the air pressure and there's minimal leakage. 
So I've made two of those. We've got two cylinders with our two pistons and our two valves. Everything's tolerance up pretty well so that we can try and reduce leaks as much as possible. In a combustion engine, we'd have actual seals on the pistons and things. And obviously that combustion will push the seal shut as there's combustion and it drives the piston. We can't really do that though because we haven't got enough force and that's just gonna cause too much friction. So for now, we're just stuck with making the parts fit really well. So we need to mount these up onto the camshaft and get them working together so that the action of the pistons moving operates the valves as it should. So I've made this wooden base with some battens on the bottom to hold it flat and some 3D printed brackets to hold the cylinders. Those mount on there just like that. My pistons have got blocks on the end now with some bearings on, so thanks to Simply Bearings for the bearings for this project, check out simplybearings.co.uk. My piston rods have got some of these low profile bearings in the end, one in each side there just like a skateboard wheel, and in the other side there's a bolt which fits into the bearings on those piston rods, so it can make that kind of motion. The crankshaft's going to be mounted in these massive bearings, and it's going to make, yep, that kind of motion again, so my flywheel needs to be fitted next. This is actually a flywheel and crankshaft made of multiple pieces, so we've got three big wheels, and then we've got these little stubs that fit in between. And that's all going to fit onto some M6 studding, and then there's some nuts each side which hold the whole thing together in tension. So there's half the crankshaft together for one of those cylinders which runs round and round and you might see the little stub on the outside for the air valve. But before we carry on with the assembly there, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PV Case. Now PV Case is a next generation AutoCAD based piece of PV software focused on automation and accuracy. It allows you to simulate the actual location of a solar plant from the earliest stages of planning, incorporating 3D topographical data points. So PV Case is the ideal choice for companies undertaking large commercial and industrial projects as well as utility scale plants. The software really is intuitive and has streamlined processes to help reduce the learning curve and improve productivity. Features include everything from the prototyping stage, electrical design, stringing, shading and terrain analysis, and automatic generation of construction documentation. So PV Case really does enable engineers and designers to take the project all the way through from its initial conception to the procurement phase. This really is an end-to-end -end approach which saves time and reduces errors. It's streamlined so you don't need to switch between tools or other software platforms. Other features include slope analysis, piling and collision analysis, automated topographical 3D cabling, side-by-side -side design comparison, and rapid 3D building preparation. Try PVKs for free by following the link in the description to this video. Right, let's get back to this air engine. That's the whole thing assembled, so if I push and pull those cylinders it seems to run okay. You'll notice there's a slight wobble in it though, and that's because I haven't put the crankshaft together quite square. I've glued it together now unfortunately, so it's going to be really hard to change it. With hindsight I probably should have put some keyways on all of those little stubs and bits of flywheel and crankshaft so that it could only fit together at a certain angle, but unfortunately I didn't do that, I just tried to eye it. But it doesn't look too bad. What you'll notice here though is that the two pistons are 90 degrees out of phase instead of 180. And that's important because they both push and pull. If they're 180 degrees out of phase they just push and pull together, whereas if they're 90 degrees out of phase then one can push as the other one is getting to the end of its pull and the next one can pull when the other one is getting to the end of its push. The next part to fit on here is another part with bearings, which is the rod that operates the air valve. So we're just going to put a little cap on there to stop it falling off. And then that goes round and round and the other end is going to operate the valve. So this piece moves hardly at all, so there's no bearing on that end and it moves just the right amount to operate the valve. I've got this adjustable bar on here with nuts so I can get that just right so the air valve moves to the precisely the right position and it moves much less than the output of the piston, only around 20 millimeters. So here's the whole thing in motion. We've got those two pistons 90 degrees out of phase and their two air valves 90 degrees out of phase with that. And the whole thing runs pretty freely which is what we need for good motion. So it's time for the EDFs. Those go into a 3D printed assembly and that makes a thing which looks like this. We've got a 100 amp ESC attached to it because the EDF is rated at 80 amps and that fits into the huge air intake, although the actual surface area is less because the motor's stuck in the middle of the EDF. I'm going to seal up all the holes and then I guess we'll give it a spin. I'm just using a 6S LiPo to power this and also one of these RC handsets. That's only half of it though, because the other side doesn't have its EDF, so as well as idling, it's actually causing more friction. So this isn't looking too bad so far. 
So I've got both EDFs fitted now and both the holes taped over as well. We've got two ESCs there, both the same, and then we've also got two batteries, so we've got enough current. So let's power that up and see what happens. Let's see what happens. <laughs> So I think that these uh, EDFs don't have quite the pressure of a vacuum cleaner, but the air is definitely moving faster. So it seems to be going crackers. It seems like there's quite a bit of force on the output there, and yeah, that's friction burning my hand trying to stop it. So it's time to put some wheels on. I've got some wheel hubs I've printed with some big bearings in there, and we've also got some TPU tires. So those should just friction fit. There's a slight groove on one and a recess on the other so they don't come off. But that's looking pretty tight, so that's going to have no problem supporting my weight. I've got the same intermediate reduction for the pulley, which is about a 3 to 1, and that's going to go in between the wheels, which have also now got a T5 pulley on, which is glued onto another hub, screwed onto the main hub. Those wheels actually mount with a little bushing thing onto a square axle made of 2040 extrusion. And with everything fitted, it all seems to run quite smoothly. So let's power it up and give it a go. Well, it seems to go along okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. It's not going as fast as I thought it would, and it's also making this terrible sound, a bit like a jet engine. I thought it'd make more of a sound like a steam engine as the air exhausts through the exhaust. More of a putt putt chuff chuff kind of sound instead of the sound of a jet engine. So I think a lot of the energy is getting wasted and just turned into air that's squirting out everywhere and also turned into sound, of course. But now it's time to see if I can actually ride on it or carry me along. It looks like success at last, but that's because I'm going downhill. So actually, yeah, it's not very powerful. The first one was better, although that was still quite hit and miss. This one on a flat ground just won't power me along at all. So we need to investigate why that is. I thought what I might try is stacking two of these EDS together end to end so we get the same airflow but twice as much pressure. I'm actually not sure it's going to go much faster or be much more impressive. So basically, yeah, we're going to go back and use the vacuum cleaner. So I've split the hose with some tea pieces and stuff and shoved those into the valves and now it kind of works okay. It looks like it's going much slower though but that's probably because there's less airflow although hopefully higher pressure. So on the ground yeah it seems to run okay. Definitely runs itself along so not too unhappy with that. Let's just try that again. Yep yeah, definitely works at least just as well as the first one did anyway. We've got pretty much the same gear reduction so why not. But let's try riding on it. Hmm, yeah that's a bit of a failure again really. It still doesn't really pull me along, although I'm pulling the vacuum cleaner along as well. It doesn't really feel like it's got any power. I still think the first version was much better than this. The first version only had one cylinder though, so it had half as many leaks, which means there was more energy going into it. So I've disconnected one of the cylinders altogether, as well as the crank that operates the valve. So let's just try running it on one cylinder. So now we've got airflow that's not shared between the cylinders, it goes much faster again. This is pretty much like the first version did offload. But let's put me on it and see what happens. Well, it feels kind of marginally better, like it'll turn over a couple of times if I give it a shove, but we really don't have any power still. So I really think there's a fundamental issue with the design of this version, if we can't even get it to do the same the first one did, with the same reduction ratio to the wheel. And the issue is, of course, I've made the cylinders too small. The other design was a massive square cylinder, and these are tiny round ones. And I specifically said in that video that I'd make them big and square, so that basically we'd have loads of force because we have a bigger surface area pushing it, and that's why it works so well. Even though it might run slower because it takes longer to get the air out with a vacuum cleaner, uh, basically we've got more force. So there's the problem. So I'm probably going to do another version with one massive cylinder or two massive cylinders, like huge drain pipes or something like that, then I think it'll work whatever we use to blow or suck air in.